Hi, my name is Glenn Woods, News Director Nick sitting across from me as we do a special town hall on the energy industry. Two guys who go through about a bottle of uh, Tums and probably aspirin every single day are Travis Detai and the Wyoming Mining Association and Pete Obermuller with Wyoming Petroleum. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, Glenn, it's been, a, uh, as the governor said, it's, uh, you know, 2020 sucks, I guess, but uh, it is, is what it is. We, you know, it really was the gas. Uh, markets that were struggling before COVID happened. Um, uh, the oil market was, was was ticking along pretty nicely, uh, but uh, because of the government restrictions related to to COVID, demand just absolutely crashed, and uh, we're, we're really still uh, feeling the effects of that right now. De- demand is is coming back, and you can see the the price of oil. I think you guys talked about this earlier in the show with Dr. Godby and others. The, the price is coming back, but it's not coming back to a level that's going to have uh, companies roaring back to Wyoming anytime soon. Do you see a light at the end of the tunnel, though? I mean, because I, I do hear rumblings out there about, well, maybe we should uh, start bringing the rigs back. I do hear from some banks saying some people are starting to borrow some money to get some things going. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit of a pessimist by nature, so uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sugarcoat anything. But I think, I think what you what you gotta understand, Glenn, is that even though demand is coming back for liquid fuels, you know, the the things that people people use, the the, the petroleum products people use, gas, uh, jet fuel, that kind of thing, the demand for that is coming back. The trouble is, um, we're kind of Wyoming's pretty far upstream from that. And it's going to take a while. It's going to take a lot of, of uptake and demand for those things before it trickles up to Wyoming for uh, the production of the oil and, and bringing back those rigs. So, you know, generally uh, you'd say there's about a, about a six month lag when there's, uh, when there's significant price changes. Uh, that lag was down to about a month on the negative side but I don't see it being fast on the on the on the positive side. I'm talking about a you know a V shaped recovery versus a U shaped recovery, and and I'm I'm still in the U shaped camp uh, until I see data otherwise. Uh, Mr. Obermuller, good morning. Um, uh, in the current climate, are there concerns among Wyoming oil and gas producers about the longevity of um, of their businesses, and if they need relief? Um, I mean, for example, from the government, what should that relief look like? Yeah. Good morning, Nick. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I think uh, despite kind of what, what maybe popular opinion is about uh, about the oil and gas industry, it, it, it's pretty difficult to make a dollar, uh, mm-hmm. even in, in good times. I mean, these wells are really expensive. You think about the Powder River Basin and these big horizontal wells that are that are drilled over there. These are these are $12 million wells that are drilled. So, the, you know, the margin is not as good as people think, even in, in decent times. Um, so you know every every business has to make their own their own just you know judgment calls and uh, you know I think we'll have some uh, consolidation in, in the market in Wyoming uh, in, in terms of government help uh, you know we heard the governor talk about that a, a little bit earlier I think what's what's important for people to know is is Wyoming from the oil and gas perspective is a very expensive place to do business uh, you know the Colorado legislature just did a study about comparing uh, tax rates in oil producing states. And uh, guess what the most expensive state is for taxes? Hmm. Uh, uh, it's Wyoming. We're more than more than double the tax rate of Colorado, almost triple New Mexico. Uh, and so, you know, we hear a lot about how, how Wyoming is number one for business uh, in tax climate. And that's true for every business uh, category except for oil and gas and probably coal. So, but it doesn't always have to be taxes too. There are other things, you know. We need it. We need a stable and predictable regulatory uh, climate. And I think you know, Wyoming's generally okay there. We have some work to do, but uh, but those kinds of things can really help to incentivize uh, business. I want to make sure to get Travis Detail in here. He's with the Wyoming Mining Association. And once again, you folks were having trouble before all of this started. There were bankruptcies and buyouts because of those bankruptcies. Where are you at now? Well, uh, uh, it, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. it's uh, you know, uh, uh, Professor Godby kind of hit on some things in his uh, in his discussion. You know, we're in a in a very different environment than we were a decade ago, uh, largely because of the the heavily subsidized government uh, build out of renewables uh, that have taken uh, uh, a good share of our of our market. Uh, 
gas prices remain stubbornly low, and uh, you know we're uh, we're we're looking to be competitive. And of course, that was the position we were in before the COVID nineteen uh, epi- uh, pandemic happened. And uh, you add that, and you just add the fuel to the fire, and uh, you know the shutdown of the economy. Uh, you know, the shutdown of businesses, uh, and it, that means less electricity being generated, and that goes directly to Wyoming uh, production. And uh, unfortunately, uh, production drives employment, so we've seen some layoffs, and uh, it's uh, a very tough environment right now. But I will say that uh, our operators uh, uh, in Wyoming are doing the best that they can, and uh, things are steady right now. Production is down about 23% from last year. Uh, that doesn't bode well for the revenue picture in the state of Wyoming, um, but it is what it is. And, uh, you know, uh, a- as Professor Godby alluded to, what we need to happen is uh, uh, we need the country to continue to open up. Uh, and it's tough. With uh, We've seen the uptick in, the, in coronavirus cases in some of our uh, bigger states that buy Wyoming coal, Texas in particular, some of those Midwestern states where... Uh, uh, their opening up of the economy has uh, slowed and will probably slow a little bit more uh, due to the coronavirus effort. And uh, it, it, it just comes down to the, the fact that we need to start uh, using more electricity in this country by opening up and opening our economy before we see some relief in Wyoming. Okay, gentlemen, that was, I know, I, and I understand, a pessimistic start to our interview for this half hour. I want to go back to Travis real quick, because you guys were in serious trouble in the mining industry before the entire economy came to pretty much a screeching halt. But people do have to get back to work, start using more electricity again. Do you see an exit strategy here, or do you have a plan laid out? Well, I think, uh, you know, domestically, um, you, you know, coal is in a different position than it was a decade ago. Uh, we are not building any more coal-fired power plants. We're using less coal domestically. Uh, there is opportunity for exports, and you heard Governor Gordon talk about uh, some of the issues going on with that, and we're pleased that the, that the governor in the state of Wyoming and the state of Montana are pr- pursuing the lawsuit uh, to let us get uh, our coal offshore. There is some demand over there uh, in, in, on the Pacific Rim. Uh, and right now, that is uh, uh, that could be the, the future for Wyoming coal is, is exports, uh, unless we crack the the carbon capture nut here in the United States and give those utilities uh, some incentive for putting some commercially viable carbon capture on existing coal-fired power plants and perhaps building some more. Uh, the domestic market is what it is. It's going to continue to uh, to contract uh, for coal. Uh, so the opportunity for coal lies overseas and. Uh, uh, the governor is absolutely right that this is a, 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 an issue of one state uh, on the on the coast, uh, uh, you know, basically throwing up the wall and saying an interior state can't export its commodity. And there's constitutional issues there that we believe in, and uh, uh, we're pleased that he that he's continuing that. So that's the future right there. So exports and technology are the key for the Wyoming. Uh, uh, keeping Wyoming coal viable. Mr. Detay, uh, good morning and thanks again for being here. Um, how does Rocky Mountain Power's shift away from coal as a fuel source? You know, you mentioned those coal-fired power plants. Of course, Rocky Mountain Power is uh, shutting several of those down here in Wyoming over the next couple of years. How does their shift away from coal as a fuel source um, impact the demand for Wyoming coal? Is, is, is their use of coal that big a deal in the, in the bigger picture? Well, you know, uh, in in the bigger picture of what we produce and what we ship, uh, it's a smaller portion of the pie. However, uh, we do mine that coal. We do get severance taxes from that coal that they mine at the uh, at the Bridger uh, mine right there in Wyoming. And more importantly, uh, those power plants employ hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, you shut those down, uh, uh, Sweetwater County, Natrona County, uh, that's job lost. And so, it uh, the impact to communities and to our state is 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 huge and uh uh you know we would we would hope that they would you know revisit it and kind of consider some of the local impacts of their decisions and uh uh, you know, and reconsider on some of those on some of those cases. Sure, thank you. And uh, Mr. Obermuller, to pivot back to you here, um, from the Petroleum of Associ- uh, Association of Wyoming's website, um, in 2018, the oil and gas industry contributed more than $2,600 per person in Wyoming to state and local governments, or about $1.39 billion. Oil and gas producers paid 30% of all property taxes in the state, and over $380 million in severance taxes. Um, I-, I know it's early in the morning, and numbers off the top of your head are not always easy for me as far as I'm concerned, but um, how have those figures changed since 2018? And if you don't have specifics, maybe how has that landscape shifted? Well, thanks, Nick. Yeah, I do have specifics. I won't uh, uh, you know, bore everybody with lots of numbers, but 
basically our, our oil and gas's share in, in 2019, we're, we're going to update our website here pretty quickly. All these numbers have a little bit of lag time for oh, sure. updating, but um, the, the 2019 numbers, uh, which is the year past what you, you uh, quoted there, has, has gone up. Uh, oil and gas basically accounts for just over 40% of all the property tax. And so, you know, just so the listeners know, in, in terms of property tax in Wyoming, the way that works, uh, about 78% of property tax goes to schools. So, you know, these are all over the state. These are elementary, uh, junior high, high school, you know. Um, so uh, great schools in Wyoming. I went to Crest Hill and Dean Morgan and Natura County up there. And, uh, you know, the oil and gas and, and coal have paid for that. In terms of minerals, it, it sort of it, it highlights what Travis is saying about, about the difficulties in coal. Is, is oil and gas is, is now... A, a, accounts for about 70% of all of that from the mineral sector. So all minerals combined, oil and gas is about 70% of, of property tax there. So 2019 is, it was actually, it shows an uptick in, in that. Um, uh, it just, it, it feels a little obsolete because 2020 is going to be, going to be worse. Sure, so. sure. Not, not a total picture of the, of the current situation, which has evolved pretty yeah. quickly, as you know. Um, mm-hmm. l- long term, just to get your prognosis here, is it likely that oil and gas production in Wyoming returns to or even, you know, potentially surpasses some of those previous record high levels? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and I, I appreciate that. And, and, and Glenn, I, I apologize for being such a Debbie Downer. I don't, I don't mean to be, but uh, I, honestly, I really do believe uh, uh, that oil and gas is going to come back and we're going to come back pretty strong. And part of that is, the reason for that is that the, the, the product, the oil in the Powder River Basin, is, is very high quality. Uh, it is light, sweet, crude, and, and it's desirable. Uh, so, you know, once demand comes back, we are going to come back. I just want people to be clear-eyed that, uh, uh, that it's going to be a little while. Uh, but to put a fine point on it, Nick, you know, back when we talked last time, I think the price was down in the, in the low 20s. Mm-hmm. And today it's at 38 and, and projected to be around there. That, look, that's improvement. Considerable improvement, uh, it's not, yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's not where we want to be yet, but, geez, that's improvement. So so uh, I don't want to be a total Debbie Downer about okay. it. We are coming back. I'll take going in the right direction, yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on. I do appreciate your time.